Today is Good Friday. Easter is a time when we celebrate God turning the inescapability of death into the invincibility of eternal life. I stand completely and utterly guilty of receiving all the consequences of my sin, but in fact, I will receive none of them because there was a day that God stepped in front of me in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross on Mount Calvary and he received the divine retribution upon himself as he threw his arms wide open and took the punishment of my sin on himself. He suffered blow after blow and yet I stood unwounded. And because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that I can be healed through the sacrifice that the perfect man, Jesus Christ, made for my sin. On this Good Friday, I would like to read a passage of Scripture. In fact, several passages of Scripture that detail the Lord's crucifixion as this is the day that our Lord was crucified. And what makes this Good Friday, it seemed like it should be Bad Friday, it's the very fact that our Lord was purchasing us back from the slave market of sin by the price of his death on the cross. I'd like to read Psalm 27 and then Isaiah 53. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore the field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying again, they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value, and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then Pilate said to him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him to never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. And he would have sat down on the judgment seat, his wife, sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whither the twain we that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made. He took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. 
Then answered all the people and said, His blood be upon us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were coming to a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of the skull, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there. And set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then were the two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they passed by and reviled him, wagging their heads, saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself, for if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priest mocking him, when the scribes and elders said, We have he has saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if he will save him. For he said, I am the son of God. The thieves also, which were crucified with them, cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them stood there when they had heard that and said, this man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of the men ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and he went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and all those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. And the scripture records for us in Isaiah chapter 53 this account of a prophecy that was given to us to describe the sufferings of Jesus Christ. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form or comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. For he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. And he opened not his mouth. 
he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not at the mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. And when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. And my friend Jesus Christ bore your iniquities and mine and all of our sin. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. The scripture says this in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Verse 23 to 26 says, Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bare our sins in his body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For you were sheep going astray, but now are returned unto the shepherd and bishop of our souls. My friend, I am so glad that the Lord Jesus Christ suffered all of these consequences and all of these penalties of sin upon himself. My friend, today there is a God that created you. He loves you far greater than anyone on this planet could ever love you, but we have rebelled against him. We have chosen to go our own way. In fact, the script, scripture compares us to sheep. That was not really a compliment. Sheep, if you've ever spent any time around them, sheep are dumb. They do some dumb things. Sheep are directionless. When they leave the fold and, and they leave the flock, they have a very hard time navigating their way back to the shepherd. And sheep are defenseless. When they're out in the wild, they are open to the attacks of all the natural predators that they face, many times unable to defend themselves. My friend, do you realize this is a description that God gives to us in Isaiah 53 of ourselves? And Romans says we've all gone out of the way and we are directionless to find our way back to the shepherd. And we've all done some dumb things and we all have broken God's law. And we are defenseless against the lion. That's uh, the spiritual lion called Satan. In 1 Peter 5, 8, as Peter mentioned and referred to Satan as a lion, we are defenseless against him. And we are certainly stand in judgment of our sin that we have accomplished. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death because of your sin and my sin, we have to die and go to an awful place called hell. And we cannot save ourselves. The scripture said in 1 Peter that we're not redeemed by keeping traditions of men or a tradition of a church and confessing our sin to a priest in some confession booth or praying through the rosary, or giving money to the church, or being baptized. We are not redeemed, the, the apostle Peter told us, with the tradition of men, or with silver or gold, or the corruptible things of this world, but we are redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. My friend, on this Good Friday, the Lord Jesus Christ accomplished everything you needed for your salvation. When Jesus said, it is finished, he wasn't kidding. Everything you needed for eternal life was completely secured and finished at the cross of Jesus Christ. And today, if you'll call upon him and make him your savior and depend upon him, he will save you today. Our only hope is Jesus Christ. It's what makes this Good Friday good. That even though our Lord was crucified on Good Friday, the resurrections on Sunday was coming a few days later. 
My friend, if you're a Christian and you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, many times we contemplate Good Friday and Easter. We should contemplate the silence that is in between of this work that the Lord was accomplishing for us. There's much treasure that we find as we meditate on the Lord Jesus Christ. And would you turn your thoughts to Him? The love of Christ constrains us. Would you surrender your life on the altar of sacrifice? Because look how much the Lord Jesus has done for you. We're grateful for all that the Lord has done. And when this, on this Good Friday, would you praise Him and meditate on Him and give Him the gift of your life in service and sacrifice and live on that altar.